Sullivan. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Board of Supervisors meeting for the town of Sebastopol on Monday, May 15th at 7 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> that was all sloppy. You love your jackets on you. In case you're wondering, we're trying to set a new dress code for the <laughs> town. Except for me. You took your jacket off already. Oh, you Sorry. should have had it on. All right. At any rate, let's start with a roll call to establish a quorum. Amy? Supervisor Derek Daniel. Here. Supervisor Linda Wade. Here. Chairman Dan Wolfel. Here. Supervisor Mark Hain. Here. Supervisor Jeannie Vogel. Here. All right. We have a quorum. We're ready to go. And we have the meet and greet. I'm going to guess we're going to know these people. Why don't we start with, I'm sorry, sir, what's your name? My name is James Vincent Mitchie. There we go. <laughs> at 4159 Bayshore Drive in the lovely metropolis of Sebastopol. All right. Good to go. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Hugh Zettel, 3986 uh, Glidden Drive, District 14 Supervisor. Super. Craig right, Nellis, um, 4216, how did this happen, sir? Craig Nellis, same place. Same place? All right. Well, welcome. All right. With that, I'll we are. The... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we want to introduce our steamed. videographers? Eric Dwayne, 4990 North Country View Road. And I almost forgot myself. You would be? <laughs> there we go. All right, we've covered the world here. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So, public participation of the. I have a short statement. Oh, you do? All right. I warned you. My name is Jim Mitchie. I reside full time at 4159 Bayshore Drive here in Sebastopol. My question regards the 2021 American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA. Records show that Sebastopol received a grant for almost $280,000. As a follow-up to that resolution, 2022-2, adopted April of last year, put forth procedures for spending these funds. I was wondering, curiosity, what has happened to these funds and what are the plans for using them? Um, my question is not doubting the correctness or the good use of these funds, but only the status and the possibilities being considered. And I don't need an answer tonight. In addition, the Bayshore Property Owners Association, BSPOA, of which I'm the president, is embarking on a review of association initiatives that we believe and hope benef will benefit the several hundred Sevastopol residents that are our, in our membership. Dovetailing these initiatives with the Sebastopol's ARPA plans could leverage funds if our interests align. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, by the way, all that money is being given to the Glidden Drive Association? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the short answer for tonight. We'll work on a real you know, answer for another. We always scraps, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it was the Clark Lake Association. It was one of those associations deserving. We'll have to let you know on that one. We'll carry that over for next month's response. How's that? Anyone else wishing to speak? All right, hearing none, uh, we would have to see it. Was our agenda properly noticed? The agenda was properly noticed. All right, then a motion to adopt our agenda would be appropriate. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion by Jeannie, second by? Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, agenda's good. Approval of minutes, Board of Supervisors meeting, April 17th. Yeah, I think you've all had a chance to take a look at them. So a motion to approve would be in order. I would move to um, accept and place on file the minutes of April 17th, 2023. A motion by Linda, second by. I'll second that. Second by Jeannie to approve the minutes from the Board of Supervisors meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Pending business. Oh, this will be a good thing. All right. One pending piece of business is the audio-visual update for the boardroom. <laughs> and leading the way <clears throat> is none other than Laddie Chapman. I'm going to have to go on camera here. Jim, I'm going to sit right next to you there. 
don't mind. But you don't have to move. <laughs> okay, I'm Laddie Chapman. I think most of you know me. And um, I don't have all the estimates that I wanted to have by now. Um, I, I uh, had visits by five people, and uh, I visited four, I forget. And anyway, two of them have not sent, gave me the estimates yet, and I tried to contact them again. But uh, I do want to get them before we seriously send this to the committee. I have only two estimates so far, and, all I, and I haven't really looked at the details in them. I want to compare them um, with the others. But they have substantially the same, um, same setup. And one of them is uh, an estimate of $12,000 for the bottom line, and the other one is $20,000. I think that the other two will probably come in in the same range. This would include all of the equipment we need to upgrade. It would use our existing microphones, because there's nothing wrong with them. We'd have a new amplifier, uh, probably a new console there near the wall, and probably new speakers, because everybody I've talked to seems to think these are not as good as we could have. And it would interface very well with our video and our future video because we, we'd hope to upgrade the video sometime in the future and we make sure we were compatible with that. But uh, the, the detail about how it would, done, how it would be done is uh, I'd rather take care of that in some other meeting unless you just want to ask me questions now. I, mean, I guess I would say <clears throat> obviously take it to the Technology and Communications Committee, but is there anything earth shattering in there, some revelation that we've missed some piece of equipment that's going to make all the difference in the world? Well, yes. Uh, oh. any, any new system, modern system nowadays, is usually uh, controlled by a tablet like this one, and it can be controlled any place in the room uh, by someone that has the tablet and knows what they're doing. Um, that would be very useful for the videographers here. Uh, and it would also be useful if the case the room is used for... Uh, I hate to interrupt, but actually one of those proposals did have a tablet listed. One of the what? One of the uh, proposals did have a tablet listed in there. Well, but they would both have use a tablet, whether right. or not it was included, yes. But yeah, one was in the price. Okay, yeah, the, that, I made that a requirement. Um, the, another advantage of the tablet is if this room were used by somebody else, and you did not want to have this open uh, for a community <coughs> event, and still wanted to use the PA system, we could have them use the tablet and have a, one of the presets on there, just a, a standard set, uh, set up that wouldn't require someone like me to adjust it uh, in detail. But the reason I like it is that I could actually control every mic separately. If one of you was leaning back or too far forward, I could control it individually as the time uh, as it was needed to be. That would improve our audio quite a bit. What about from the uh, speaker from the floor? Well, we could use uh, the same thing here and it would be controllable by the tablet. Every mic in the room would be controllable individually by someone with the tablet. Or they could ignore it if they just, <coughs> if, if someone was here like Amy just wanted to set the room up and there was no need for me to be, that, be here for that purpose, she could just uh, choose a preset and it would be uh, pretty much ordinary. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> a usable arrangement. Okay. Would so work. this isn't video, basically no video at all? There's all no video audio. at all in these estimates, although I, everybody that I've talked to for the audio upgrade, I've told them, we, we, first of all, we have to make sure that whatever is done matches and works with the video. And we would also have to work with a future video upgrade because we hope to do something along the lines in the future. So. Are the mics we have here going to be gone? With the new mics, with the traveling mics too, or those? No, these could be used. Every, every used? one of the mics we have can be used, and we might even add one or two more, perhaps. But that's one of the things that there's no expansion possibility in this existing PA. But I made sure that we could expand uh, for a new one. We could add more mics. If we decided to do it. Uh, we could also plug in somebody's uh, iPhone or the MP3 player, whatever they had, if they, if they wanted to come here and play music over the sound system, and it would sound pretty decent. 
com compared to now, at least. Do they still do microphones hanging from the ceiling? Is that like for boardrooms? You can. It's not the best for most applications. Okay. I mean, uh, you, you definitely want a mic close to someone. Um, and hanging overhead is, is good for a choir, maybe, but not too good for a group of people. Okay. It's probably better than nothing. How about uh, lapel mic? <clears throat> well, these, these can be used with a lapel mic. Actually, it's not the microphones themselves. It's the amplifier that we don't have the expansion now to do that. But we have extra channels where we could plug in on a lapel or use a handheld yeah. one or a combination of them. Um, it, it's, it's certainly much more expandable. That's okay. part of the requirement. I'm going to call a committee meeting in the first part of June. Okay. Because now that he has, Some it probably looks going. like what bids he's probably going to get. We can sit down as a committee and review. Okay. Review. Sounds good. We will turn it back <laughs> okay. over to that committee and let them. Sorry, go ahead. Um, okay, uh, that was going to be my question too, and you touched on it briefly, Laddie, about organizations that rent this room, and we have requests for a microphone or speaker system. <laughs> yeah. Um, so programming a laptop, that's fine, but we wouldn't want the chance that somebody's going to walk off with our laptop, or if Amy would have the capability <coughs> to pre-program, you right. know, at 10 o'clock, this organization, they're going to have be able to use microphones or whatever. Yes. We but we wouldn't want our equipment disappearing. Well, we, we or being unless we want to put a chain on it or yeah. something and a padlock. Well, that's part of the down payment, I mean, if they steal all our tables, we know who took them. <coughs> yeah, right? You know what I mean? We know who's using the, yeah. and who's ever in charge of you, whatever yeah. program they're just doing here at party. And and tell them right there, if that walks off, you're buying us a new one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe an additional um, rental fee and or deposit for the if you audio. want the speaker if you want to system, use it. it's yeah. an additional mm -hmm. right. security sure, deposit. Do right. Good idea. Yeah. I Look. also know that if we are going with a tablet to run everything, um, you can purchase uh, mounts for like the wall that tablets can lock into. Okay. And then when you want to unlock them and take them portable, you can do it that way. So like, for example, if we want to use it, go unlock and keep it with us. But if you want it for a public thing, you can just go to it and it's locked to the wall and they can mess with it there. there you go. That could be an option. It's good. All right. Okay. It's all yours, Jeannie. Figure out how we can get it for four thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, pull a bunny, wrap right. it out of my Thanks, head. Thanks, Odd, Laddie. All right. <clears throat> the next item it came up out of our board of review training, and this was, and this is just a discussion, basically to decide if we're going to allow someone to to come in for the board of review and give us. Um, over the telephone right. discussions uh, in support of, of their request uh, <clears throat> what we <clears throat> what we believe will happen is that between we cannot approve this until we are actually in session for the board of review so look at it any input changes that we might want to make uh, Amy would tell somebody that we anticipate having if someone calls and says I want to come in via phone we anticipate having that, but we won't actually know that until the board of review, um, simply because that's the way it's got to be approved. But at any rate, so what's in here, has anybody got any suggested changes Do we that we want to make with this? Otherwise, we'll roll it over and do it as the first thing as our board of review. Well, in the past, um, our board of review, we've often waived the two hour or the advance notice. You right. know, somebody walks in the door. Um, the assessor likes to know ahead of time who's objecting so that he can have his records and analysis handy. So if we're going to, I have no problem, you know, if they need to appear by a telephone, but they will need to file that objection notice plenty of time so our assessor has a heads up. So I don't know if we can incorporate that in there somehow. Um, I don't know why we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Just put a requirement that if you're going to do that, it, you have to have it. What would be a good time? 24 hours in advance, day prior. 24 business 
you know, or at least one business day. Uh, all right. Well, if they need to appear by telephone, I'm going to assume it's out of convenience or they have a, mm -hmm. they can't make it on June 27th or whatever. Right, because so they they're should out of state know or... that, okay, I need to file this objection form and have it complete with their evidence or witnesses or whatever standing by. Okay. Well, it says, if you look at the... <coughs> The procedure, like one, you have A, and then sub one, two, and three, that says timely notice. Right. We'll just have to put the wording in there of right. how much the timely. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do that. Anything else? All right. Okay, Amy and I will revise the wording, and then we'll just uh, put it into effect for the Board of Review, and if somebody calls in and says they want to do it by phone, Amy, we'll tell them it's going to be basically what we discussed, plus one business day ahead. <coughs> I don't want to relive the, uh, yeah. comes in at the last minute and away we go. Okay, <coughs> sounds good. <coughs> um, we have a couple of uh, EMRs that have been in our town since the very beginning of our EMR first responders. And uh, in recognition of their service, uh, we're going to throw the ball over to Derek who's the chair of that group, to just tell us a little bit about them and what we're going to do. So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, last month we were given notice from Ashley Stotts, our EMR crew chief, that Linda Schultz and Fred Erickson will be retiring and no longer renewing their EMR license this year. Uh, they both were some of the founding members of the EMR group and have 30 years wow. responding to our residents' needs. So we'd like to present them with some gift cards as a thank you and uh, enjoy their retirement. 30 years? 30 years. Wow. I thought it was 26 or 7. I guess I missed that somewhere. Yep. So. They were EMRs before Sebastopol actually became a group on its own. Oh, okay. So. I've got it. We had asked them if they could join us this evening. They were unable to do so but the town has provided some gift cards in recognition of their service and we thank them and if you see them, thank them for their service and tell them to enjoy the time off from responding to these calls. Uh, so. I, yeah, I know that uh, Lynn, both Linda and Fred, I think have responded when my mom needed help and they were there, Johnny on the spot um, and pleasant knew their stuff and so personal thank you to both of them from myself and my family. Good. Any other comments? All right. Thanks, Derek. All right. Shower road update. This is a pretty simple one, as you know, we're, what we're working on. <clears throat> the good news is the contract was signed and the company has actually gone out and started to designate the right of way, which was the precursor to getting the DNR to come out and check for um, endangered species, burial sites, etc. I don't know that you can see it except for maybe where you start, where they start to go into the park or from the parking lot side because it's pretty far over. But at any rate, <clears throat> it has been staked, so that puts us into the next step. So, with a little bit of luck in the late summer, I think we'll have some idea as to whether or not this is a viable option. And then we can try to figure out how we're going to pay for it. Hopefully. So um, if, if need be on Friday, we can take a ride up there as part of the road tour if anybody wants to do that. So, all right. And then going on to destination door county community funds. And, and Linda, maybe you've been on top of this more than most. Um, maybe some of you have seen, there's been a couple of news releases, an article that came out that talks about excess room tax monies being uh, available and designated for different parks. And I'll, I'll let Linda talk a little bit more about it. Okay. Well, there's, uh, right now we're dealing with two separate pots of money. So the destination Door County had excess funds that they have established the community investment fund. So I believe the initial was 895 and I think they put in another 950. So that is the fund that 
you can apply for. Um, it should or it must generate uh, additional visitors and overnight stays. So that's a little bit separate. The thing that most recently came up before the tourism zone was the distribution of the tourism uh, reserve funds. So reserve <coughs> funds over and above their budget revert or supposedly we're going to revert back to the tourism zone. But instead of doing that, um, and if it's 925,000, that uh, the proposal is to establish um, a parks fund. That would be municipal parks, county parks, friends of, Co of Door County Parks, and um, even the state park. So again, that initial um, pot would be 925,000. It was proposed at our tourism zone meeting, our last tourism zone meeting on April 27th. Municipal parks would receive 150,000, where each municipality receives $2,500 um, for their municipal parks. Um, they would set parameters that have to follow state statute, and it would be managed by destination, Door County. The Friends of Door County Parks would be allocated $150,000, and there's like Friends of Whitefish Dunes Park, um, probably Friends of City Parks, whatever. Uh, again, parameters that have to follow the state statutes and managed by the Door County Community Foundation. And then the third pot would be the Door County State Park Fund, $500,000. Fifty thousand to each of our five state parks. Uh, uh, could be a dollar for dollar match with other um, organizations, the DNR or the state or whatever. Again, parameters per state statute, um, and it doesn't say. I believe that would be managed by Destination Door County. And then the fourth pot would be one hundred and twenty-five thousand going to the Community Investment Fund, so into that grant program. Um, so there would be close to $2 million in that in community investment fund now. Um, <coughs> I don't know what their first quarterly, if they've decided on the first quarter or not. Anyway, so it was, um, it was discussed at the Tourism Zone Commission. Um, a couple of myself and one or two other commissioners had asked why do we need to act on this immediately before bringing it back to our municipal boards. True, we're designated by the municipalities to represent them on the tourism zone, but what was the big hurry and why couldn't we delay it a month or two to bring this back to the boards? Um, Mr. Elliott made the motion that we proceed as drafted and uh, somebody seconded and the majority did vote to just, yep, go ahead, this is going to be the plan. It was so, a small group, though. It was a, yeah. Um, yeah. My question is, why does the community foundation have to monitor and manage these funds? It's my understanding that they don't charge a fee, but they keep the interest earned. I, I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Um, so can Destination Door County not directly distribute to the state park fund or to the county I mean, why can't parks they? or whatever? Why can't, why can't they? They? Was... they can distribute directly to yeah. us. Yeah. Why can't they, you know, and they have marketing entities that they distribute funds directly to. So that was my question, why does the community, not that I have anything against the community foundation, mm -hmm. Mr. Bucoy and his staff, they're great. I approached them on a coastal byway grant already, so, but um, why can't we keep this in-house with destination Door County? Um, as long as you're following the state statutes, but like I said, the motion carried, so I think it's pretty much a done deal. Do you think it's just that they didn't want the overhead to have to deal with it? And if you're talking about giving, giving the uh, uh, Brett's group the money, I mean, a couple million bucks earning 5% right now, 4 to 5%, that's a pretty significant piece of change. And right now the 
Right. The one month T bill was 5.5%. Mm -hmm. So if they stuck right. in $2 million, they yep. would, yeah. 100000 and that, that And that That's would go into we Destination Door County's pot. So they'd have even more funds to distribute. Yeah. But. Uh, that's the plan. I don't know if you if you want to see it. I can email it to each of you. Um, this was the pretty much the distribution. It was in our in our tourism zone packet. Linda, so you didn't say how much the friends of get. You said how oh, much the total but how much? The friends of each? Door County Parks, one hundred and fifty thousand. Yep. They yeah. would be eligible for one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, parameters following state statute. There would so be an application process. So that they, they can get that up, the entire hundred fifty thousand. No, um, there would be an application process, just like the the community investment fund. You apply. So friends of Whitefish Dunes, they would have to fill out an application. This is why we need the money. This is what we're going to okay. use it for. So it's shared so across the. It's shared. Trees, yeah, three, I'm not uh, sure how many friends of Door County Parks we have. No, there's one in Potawatomi, Pence, and, yeah. and up north as well. Okay, Newport. but this is county. I'm sorry, this is county parks. So the state um, parks got separate. Right. The five state parks. I know that the graphs are very involved. It's a great group. Um, I know some of them, and they volunteer time. I mean, they put a lot of work into keeping our parks looking immaculate, as far as I'm concerned. And in so. our parks, we got 2,500. And yeah, the municipal team. each municipality receives 2,500, and the remainder that. would be distributed based on the percentage of room tax. That's right. That's it's in there. Managed by destination. So we oh. have uh, Whitefish Bay Park. We have Sebastopol well, Town Park. Well, how state many parks par can we create? State parks it's are, per, it's state per parks are separate. I yeah, I might have mixed them up there, but state parks, they're their own little pot. So, yeah, we have Clark Lake Beach. We have the Town Park. We have the Ramp. We have. Yeah, we're loaded with parks. Yeah. Let me get us that ten grand. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, maybe when this comes up for review next year, we can ask the questions in ahead of time and say, you know, how's it going and why? Oh, can I make one more comment? So Julie Gilbert or someone from Destination Door County staff um, will be making a brief appearance at our Door County Towns Unit meeting on uh, Thursday, next Thursday. Thursday. So question and answer. So maybe that will be a question we can pose to her why they cannot make direct distributions. A good opportunity. Yep. All right. Thanks, Linda. You're welcome. All right. Moving on to financial reports for the month of April. You have account balances, the budget versus actual, and the transaction list for the month. And we have a treasurer. Mm -hmm. She's switching hats now. This is the treasurer. Yes. And you have something that you'd like to add? Sure. The town has received uh, the charter franchise fees for the first quarter. We are also above budget uh, in the postage category um, because we purchased enough postage to get us through the rest of the year before the increase went into effect. Um, as you have noticed, the town has been going, uh, doing a lot of large uh, tree removal uh, and tree trimming. And so we're trying to keep up with that. Currently, um, we are utilizing the majority of that budget. Um, in the interest earned category, we budgeted $3,000 for 2023, and we are currently over $15,000 in that category. In, in which category? Interest. Interest earned. Oh, interest. I'm sorry. You were on trees, and I thought, no, no, those numbers didn't. Okay. You, you missed the words. I did. Interest I missed that earned. key one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good news. See, that's why I ended on a good why note. Brett's group is managing the money. All right. Uh, all right. So we need a motion to accept the financial reports. I'll make a motion. Motion by Derek. Second by? Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Great. All right. Approvals of vouchers, bills, and claims for April through May. You should have all had a chance to take a peek at that as well. I would uh, move to approve the voucher bills and claims for the period April 18th through May 15th, 2023, right. as presented. Thank you. Motion by Linda. Second by? Second. Second by Jeannie. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Hi. 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 Bulls, the other one carries. Look at that. All right. Oral Committee Commission Reports. I don't believe we have any printed reports. Anybody else have a committee report they'd like oral? Well, the hmm. Executive Committee of the Tourism Zone meets Thursday. <coughs> um, I looked at that briefly today and 33 new short-term rental permits issued, not all in our town. Oh. Um, I think there were two or three in our town. Um, oh, and they commented on uh, the J-1 visas, too, that 500 are coming to Door County this wow. summer. They opened that up. So that's great. Wow. Um, Much needed. Yeah, Destination Door County, they also work with uh, job posting as far as available jobs. Um, so we now have 1,455 permits. 1,400? Yeah, now that includes resorts and motels oh, as well. Okay. So, um, oh, and then I think somebody asked the question, um, if property is sold or transferred to a new owner, the tourism zone does require a new permit. So they would need to apply for a new permit to replace that. And then also 222 zone permits did not have debt cap license. So they have been notified to cure that situation. We will probably have on next month's agenda <clears throat> another short term rental, uh, which we have issues with. <clears throat> it's currently being reviewed by the attorney, so it will probably appear mm -hmm. next month. So we will see, mm. but just as a heads up. All right, thank you, Linda. Okay. All right, then we have the county board report from District 14 Supervisor, Mr. Hugh Zell. Mr. Chairman, uh -oh. could Time I have out. one thing? Um, I did get up. notice that Destination Sturgeon Bay is going to have a board meeting um, next Thursday at and 8 o'clock, so okay. I will try to oh. participate in that. Great. All right, Hugh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, and again, thank you for the time to provide you updates on what's going on at the county board. Um, I'm just gonna cover you know, one item from, from the notes uh, that uh, I provided uh, to, uh, the, to the clerk, uh, so I can spend some time just to give an update on what's going on with the uh, intersection of Gordon Road and Highway 4257. Uh, the April 18th meeting, um, it, it was out of its uh, normal, you know, th uh, last week, last Tuesday of the month, since it's kind of the organizing meeting for the second half of the county board term. Uh, all the committee chairs uh, and positions remained as is uh, going into the second year. And uh, the uh, most of the uh, discussion for that organizing meeting was a meeting rules uh, review and change. Uh, admin committee had had proposed uh, in a resolution to eliminate remote public comment. As you know, that garnered uh, a lot of discussion. I received a lot of feedback from constituents in the town. Um, and uh, what we ended up doing is amending a motion to continue remote comments uh, during a uh, public uh, comment meeting uh, portion. So uh, that uh, was uh, approved by uh, 17 to 4. Uh, vote and I have voted in the affirmative to update and to allow um, remote uh, public comments to continue to be made. Um, uh, the other item of interest is uh, Forestville Mill Pond. Uh, the uh, Great Colthurst provided a update on the testing plans. Uh, there was a grant received from the state to kind of uh, do a more detailed assessment on how the drawdown. Uh, uh, went, uh, you know, the, the, whether it was successful or not successful. So they're doing a bunch of detailed water samples, plant samples, uh, sampling fish uh, with uh, the DNR's help. And uh, there'll be a thorough report uh, provided next year as part of that process. There's also a discussion relative to what is the long term role of the county in managing the mill pond. Uh, since that's uh, county property, um, and uh, that's just going to be, you know, discussed further relative to the long-term sustainability um, of that uh, of that structure. 
then I'll, I'll move forward. And Len, if you could put the presentation up, please. Yeah, I'll come down. Um, there's been a lot of uh, dis activity over the last month um, regarding the um, traffic safety at Gordon Road, uh, otherwise known as County BB, and Highway 4257 intersection. So I'd like to provide an update um, on what's been going on both at the Highway Safety Commission meeting and uh, the, the Highway and Facilities Committee meeting re regarding that activity. Um, going to the next page, I have a typo that I've got to, I've got to fix and I'll send uh, Madam Clerk an update. There were 25 accidents and one fatality from uh, 2015 to 2022. I was able to receive reports um, from uh, Chief Deputy McCarty and there were three additional uh, accidents after um, this initial presentation that I put together for the uh, Highway uh, Safety Committee meeting back in July of last year. Um, three of them that occurred since that uh, July uh, uh, time frame. Two of them were, again, uh, two people attempting to do a left turn, and then one uh, where they kind of uh, rear-ended another car uh, in the southbound lane. But on the right-hand side, you can just see that, uh, you know, total 25 accidents. Um, and if you look at um, uh, the number of accidents and in, in injured, uh, it's, you know, roughly, you know, you know, five times if you look at it relative to people trying to turn uh, left. Uh, it doesn't correlate with traffic. As you can see, there's actually less traffic in of last year than there was in 2021. If we recall, 2021 was off the charts if you looked at sales tax. Um, if we looked at uh, ambulance calls, a lot of those barometers, 2021 was really an aberration in peaks of you know, people visiting the county activity. Um, and 2022, the, you know, probably a combination of inflation and other factors, uh, s some re uh, returning to normalcy. Uh, uh, those numbers, you know, have gone uh, down from a traffic perspective. Um, the most of the July accidents have occurred in the July month of July, second by uh, uh, the month of May. And if you go to the next page, um, basically, you know, there were 12 left turns from Gordon Roads is by far the leading candidate. Twice the number of the next, uh, you know, uh, accident type. Um, and when you talked to the Wisconsin Department of T Transportation in the Highway Safety Commission meeting uh, three weeks ago, you know, they say that left turn from the highway onto Gordon Road, it, you know, it, they feel is uh, an, an issue for them because that's where you have the most serious accidents. Um, that being said, uh, I know our Highway Safety Commissioner worked really hard last year in the month of July to try to get them to, uh, as part of the repaving project, widen that section of road to allow a left turn lane uh, for the northbound 4257 to go on to Gordon Road to, to eliminate, um, you know, the, the accident potential there, as well as the project uh, to do a right turn lane only. Uh, but they uh, uh, refused to do that with their comment being that uh, it wouldn't be up to the standard of their design. So. That uh, uh, was about as far as we got. If we go to the next page, please, Laddie. Um, just to kind of just put a timestamp on all the activities that have gone on to, uh, in the right uh, turn only lane status. Um, a request was made to create a right turn only lane at Gordon Road and at the uh, Safety Commission meeting. That's where I first did the presentation uh, with the support of of, of uh, uh, Chairman Dan Wolfel and also Supervisor Dale Vogel, who uh, kind of was, uh, you know, my, uh, my cohort since we, you know, that intersection kind of is on the border of both of our districts, so it's a shared concern for us. Um, at, the, at the August 23rd meeting, the board approved a resolution uh, unanimously to basically make improvements at a budgeted amount at that time of $100,000, assuming that the improvement um, Improvements could have been made in 2022, and we could have gotten a permit from the state uh, because we needed to do some of that work in the right of way. Um, at the 1115, the November Highway and Facilities Committee meeting, uh, Chairman Engelbert informed the board, uh, uh, or, or, 
uh, that the DOT was applying for a grant to upgrade Gordon Road and, uh, and Highway 4257 intersections and any improvements that the county uh, would make would disqualify them from securing grants that basically put a stop on any efforts we wanted to do to, to do the right turn only lane and basically put us in a holding pattern until we found out the disposition of that uh, grant. Um, fast forward to, to, to this uh, past month uh, at the uh, Highway Facilities uh, Highway and Facilities Committee meeting, uh, uh, Commissioner Tad Ash reported that the DOT did receive a grant. Uh, they're in the midst of getting things finalized, so it'll show up on the system to improve that intersection. Um, there are options they'll have to consider going through a whole public comment period, public hearings, et cetera. But given the area that they have to work with, it's likely uh, uh, in their mind is going to be a, a, a roundabout. Um, you know, other options would be a J turn, you know, like you have by County C. Another one is called what they call a compressed U, which is uh, County K uh, in, I think, Kiwani County there by the BP on your way to the shrine. Uh, but that takes up a lot of space, so it's probably going to be a roundabout. But again, we'll, we'll know as they go through that process. I think what's important to note is per the DOT, uh, a program like this is typically six years. So if you take six plus 23, that gets us in a 2029 for construction, they're going to try to fast track it uh, to uh, 2028 uh, or sooner, but they said that might be a stretch. Um, so when you look at an average of two accidents per year, going back from 2015, um, two accidents per year from people trying to attempt a uh, left turn lane. So you multiply nine times two, that's 18 accidents we could try to avoid. And it was unanimous within that uh, highway and facilities committee meeting that the county is still going to take action. So um, the committee approved uh, unanimously a motion for Commissioner Ash to provide an updated proposal uh, and budget for uh, implementing improvements at the intersection and that'll be at their June 14th meeting. And then coming out of that meeting will likely be a resolution uh, that will go to the county board uh, the following week to, to get something done. And I think everybody wants to get it expedited. Uh, Commissioner Ash talked about some, um, some of the proposals. Uh, it, it would also include not only the, the right turn only uh, aspect at, at the intersection, it would also include some widening at Gordon Road and Old Highway Road uh, just for, for turning radius. So that uh, he commented that. And also because of probably increased traffic per, for people use, going back to use the roundabout, um, there's also going to probably be a, a widening at that intersection of Old Highway Road and Egg Harbor Road. Um, just to, to help with the, the traffic burden because there'll be more traffic at that intersection because of the right turn only. And that intersection down by Gordon and Old Highway right by Culver's has always been a problem for us yeah. too because that always slopes off so we're going to pass the baton. That's yeah. good. So uh, the Highway Commissioner and the County Board are fully engaged to make safety improvements as soon as possible uh, given the current challenges they have trying to um, you know, get something that will work uh, with uh, um, uh, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. But um, I'm optimistic that uh, coming out of that June 14th meeting, we'll have a resolution that will go to the county board uh, that will likely, you know, uh, be successful for us to resolve at least this, this one problem as we uh, get towards, um, you know, looking forward to a, a new intersection uh, down the road. Uh, the last page, just an appendix, is just a list of all the accidents um, that have occurred there. One of the things that's different from the previous summary is um, there was a lot of discussion with the state. The state's contention was, and a lot of this is they, set, they cite general statistics that most accidents, you know, 80% of the accidents are caused by local residents. Um, and so what I did from the, from the previous data is I actually took the distance, you know, from the the accident records I got from uh, uh, Chief Deputy McCarty, it's got, you know, you know who the driver was, where they live. So basically I got all the, the how many road miles from their residents to where that intersection is. And, you know, they claim someone from Sister Bay is, you know, is, is local. But if you look at the distance from Sister Bay to say somebody that lives in downtown Kiwani, it's basically the same distance. Mm -hmm. So if it, it, or someone from Washington Island that was involved in some of these 
uh, accidents, you know, that's the same distance as somebody who's from Green Bay. So this whole notion of what's local, um, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. So we kind of, you know, put some, some information here because they thought if it's local, you guys have an education problem. And it's like, no, it's seasonal tourism, tourists, uh, and, and given the distance that people have to travel, given our topography of the county, you know, that local number is, is uh, you, you have to look at it specifically to the geography. So we're providing that information as well so we can educate them in the upcoming public hearings, as well as to make sure they understand how closely we're watching, uh, you know, what they're doing and to, give them, to make sure they're, we're uh, properly assessing this uh, risk area. So with that, I'd be happy to entertain any questions you have on any of the county board notes or this update. Mr. Chair. Well, I noticed, so now that that area is blacktopped and, and whatever, so I was coming from Sturgeon Bay heading north on 4257. There was a vehicle stopped waiting to turn onto Gordon Road, and there was a vehicle behind him not having his blinker on. So do I go to that you know, right paved shoulder, knowing that he's going to zoom ahead as soon as this fellow turns. So I don't know how you would ever cure that situation yeah. other mm -hmm. than paying attention. Because, I mean, yes. we could have, you know, we, crashed each other. At, at the Highway Safety Commission meeting, Supervisor Waite, we asked them about, you know, you know, some municipalities where we where they know that they have a dangerous intersection. You know, they have they have you know a yellow warning sign with a light to say, hey, this is a, a dangerous intersection. Uh, some intersections, right? They also they'll also uh, you know grind the road to to get you an audible you know uh, tone you know from your tires running over to at least provide you you know increased awareness. And we asked them about that, and, and we really didn't get any response from the state. Anything. You know, just even during the interim, while we're waiting nine years for a, uh, a roundabout to help, yeah. you know, create awareness where we know that education is going to be limited given all the tourists that are here. So mm -hmm. we'll, con we'll continue to, to pound them on that. So what's Dad's guess, assuming he gets the okay from the state this fall? No, no. He's going he's gonna to go push. F f even in the summer, he'll start work. He wants to get it done. He, he doesn't want to wait until the fall. And I th he's looking at an approach that is uh, uh, minimize, minimizes uh, uh, costs, you know, given what they've done with the repaving. Um, and so that's what he'll come back at the June 14th meeting to give us some details on. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any well, other? I just want to say thank you for yeah. putting this time in. You, um, I know with mailers and stuff, when you send out mailers, we get mailers that go to Marinette because it's 12 miles away or 18 miles away. So with what you're doing with the miles away, that's outstanding. Because we could get a local from Marinette in an accident that we all know is not local. Correct. Thank you very much for putting that yeah. time in. That's no, really you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate Supervisor Haney. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, moving on, license and permits. You have a copy of Door County Inspection's April report. Mm -hmm. They continue to be busy. Mm -hmm. And Amy, I must have a mind block on yep. the <clears throat> Northeastern Wisconsin Antique Power Association. You issued them a beer license, picnic license, right? Yes, so they are having a tractor pull this Saturday. I believe it starts at 11 a.m. And uh, yeah, they're having a little tractor pull out there. Everyone is welcome. So uh, we're advertising it on our signs and whatnot for them. So yeah, go out there and have a, cold a nice day. Oh yeah, a cold one. Yeah, a cold one. Okay, good to know. Does that picnic license carry over then for the thresher even too? Or no. Is that, no. We have to do separate for those, right? Correct. Which is where the uh, farm breakfast is going to be at the threshery grounds this year. Yep. So mm -hmm. no one volunteered apparently, so wow. it'll be there. <clears throat> but they make it interesting. Some well, I think they're doing it because the 40th year of the threshery, right? They also want to bring that. Jamie Henschel said that no one, uh, this was no, just oh, okay. a conversation with her, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I think it's getting harder and harder to find, find somebody that, yeah, uh, that does true. it. So it'll be convenient for Derek. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to fall out and walk right over. Well, I like Derek's idea of bringing a few cows and calves over so that we can have some livestock there. 
Yeah. It should, should be something. Yeah. I'm sure they'll have the petting too. Goats or The farm something. does. They bring the usual little pettings with the dairy breakfast. Hmm? We're going to go ahead, Derek. It's OK. We're OK with it. It'll be, it will be fun. Give them cow rides. First Sunday in July, mm -hmm. 6.30 to 11.30. All right, moving on, correspondence. So you have the April uh, short-term rental permits, tourism. And copy the payment notice for municipal services, 966 bucks. Notice of a timber cutting by the shops. A note <coughs> from a Mr. McCabe thanking us for our work and effort on the short-term rental ordinance. Uh, payment in lieu of tax. So the Department of Natural Resources sends us some money to cover the property that they have in the park. And what was the amount? Five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. There you go. Page. Well, next page. Thank you. Yep. I thought it was on there. Five thousand two hundred eighty-seven dollars. And that's everything that's in your correspondence. In announcements, we have a park and rec meeting on Thursday, this week Thursday at 6 p.m. The infamous and fun-loving road tour is on Friday. If somebody knows of a pothole or something they need to have checked out, please get it to Amy before Friday or one of us. The open book, an opportunity to see how your property is assessed as compared to your neighbors. Friday, May 26th at 10 a.m. here. And the next Board of Supervisors meeting, Monday, June 19th at 7 p.m. I think that covers everything that's the in there. Sale. Um, oh, I, had, I had on my calendar that the road tour was going to start at 9.30. Yes, that's what I had. Oh, that's that's easy. Okay. Okay. Which is it, 9 or 9.30? 9. It's Sounds 9. like it's 9.30. 9 you, right? Yeah. You're accommodating sure. in Linda, right? I'm sure it was just a typo. Yes, it, it's, my it's my fault. It's my fault. The it's annual it. town yard sale. Oh, and that's June. <laughs> that's in June. We're looking for um, <coughs> uh, salespeople that want to come and sell their goods. It's going to be Saturday, June 10th, over here at the town park. I've reserved the park. Um, we're running an ad actually in Peninsula Pulse because we only have a few signed up right now, right? Yeah, we have about six or seven people signed up. So anyone looking to sell stuff, the spaces are free. Yep. It just takes your time and effort yep. um, to want to go through your stuff and, and bring it here. So I think it's a pretty good deal. You set up your space, you keep the money, uh, you remove your items that do not sell. Um, it's convenient because you don't have to drive down all these country roads where we've got good exposure right on the highway. So it's from when to when? Well, ten eight to six, four. Eight to four. I said four. seven. Now it's seven. Seven, seven to four. Oh, God. Seven to whenever oh. because people. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, as it dwindles, people leave. So. We could be taking our old audio visual equipment to that auction if things. Or our out. old copier. <laughs> our old copier. That's another idea. <laughs> We need to just get somebody over there. Just tie down your tents, right, Linda? <laughs> yeah. I've come up with, yeah, if I do that tent canopy again this year, I'm going to zip tie it to the fence. <laughs> Something. Uh -huh. All right. Instead of having it blow over into the playground. It's that time. Mm. I think we have completed this evening's agenda. A motion to adjourn would be... I would like to make that motion to adjourn, please. A motion by Derek to adjourn. Is there a second? I'd like to second that. Mark is going to second that. I don't think I want to bring it to a vote. No, all right, I will. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.